Hey mate, how you going? Good, finally I get out of you. Yeah, been a while. <laughs> all good, how's things? Yeah, all good, how about yourself? Yeah, very good, enjoying the pleasant weather here at the moment, it's nice. Yeah, it's, it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. Now, Jack, you're okay with me recording this, mate? Yeah, go for it, you're all good. No worries, and you're okay with me putting it out on our YouTube? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so, how long ago were you in Tassie? Well, it would have been, it was last week I was there. Yep. Yeah, the entirety of last week. Okay, so this was a very, very recent sighting. Yeah. Alright, so let's hear it, what happened? Alright, uh, so we were in, we were in Hobart for the day, me and two mates, and then we had to get to a campground that night. Yep. Because we were going hiking the next day, and we were camping uh, up near Liffey Falls. Yes. So we were we were driving, driving, driving. Got off the main highway that goes between Hobart, Hobart and Launceston. Yep. And then turned onto the A5. Yep. Which at night you got to go bloody slow because it's windy and there's animals everywhere willing to jump in front of the car. Yeah, they're pretty suicidal down there. Yeah, it's a bit crazy there, and um. Well, uh, I'll send you the screenshots of the Google Maps, I think. Yeah, you did. I'm not sure exactly where it was. It was in the middle of kind of nowhere. And we saw this, like, um, we're going past about 80 or k's an hour. Sort of like dog thing on the side of the road. In probably five minutes off the road in the bushes. Yep. And my mate turns to me, he was driving. And he was like, oh, do you see that dog? It was, it was like a dog with stripes. And I was like, yeah, I saw that thing as well. And he was like, oh, what do you reckon it was? And I was like, I don't know, it looked to me like a, like a bloody Tassie tiger. And then he was like, oh, what's that? And then I had to explain the whole, what it is to him. And then get some of the pictures up on Google of the one from the 30s. Yep. And we both kind of agreed that it was very similar, but we didn't see the head of it. We just saw the second half of the body, if that makes sense. As it sort of took off into the bushes. It was kind of just in the bushes, I don't know, looked to be like looking around it wasn't really it wasn't taking off so it was just doing its thing yeah but we only saw it for a second or two though okay so when you say a bit like a dog what sort of breed of a dog in comparison for size you reckon for size i would say oh bloody hell i've got here at home i've got a american staffy crossed with a german pointer so it's a reasonably and, big uh, dog yeah it'd be, it'd be a medium-sized dog so about the size of that? Yeah. Okay. Um, so what exactly did you see as far as distinguishing features? You saw stripes? Yeah, so it was a lighter colour, like hair, and then it had the dark stripes yep. going from at least the middle of the body all the way down to the back. Of the tail. And then, yep. Yeah, and then a real thick tail. Okay. Um, you didn't really see it walking because you just sort of went past it? Yeah, no, we just went past it. And what sort of car were you in? A high car? No, we are in a um, Ford Falcon, so a low one. It's lowered everything. <laughs> we were bloody low to the ground. Yeah, good headlights? Yeah, yeah. So no mistaking about what you saw? Definitely not, no, because we've, we've been going past animals all night and there was nothing like anything we had seen that night. Yeah, okay. How long were you on the road for? All day and into the night sort of thing? Uh, we were, yeah, about three hours. Yeah. That was about probably an hour and a half into it. And just the two of you in the car? We had one guy in the back seat as well, who also saw it, but very briefly. Okay, as you went past. Yeah. Excellent. Um, did you, like, did, I, I think you said something to me in your original message, you sent me that he was a bit of a sceptic or something, or hadn't heard of it before, or? Yeah, he hadn't really heard of it before, so I, I explained, like, the whole, the whole deal to him. Yeah. And then, yeah, after explaining to him and showing him a photo, the black and white photo, he kind of agreed that, yeah, it looked very similar to that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it was a fair decent size. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so, after seeing that, um, <laughs> how did you find me, basically? Were you, were you already in the group or what happened? Yeah, yeah, I already knew about you from, like, last year. Okay, oh, yep. Yeah, so I've um, like been aware of the whole thing for a while now. And now you're in that lucky club. Yeah, I've joined the club, apparently so. You need a t-shirt, mate. Yeah, you got t-shirts? <laughs> <laughs> we do on our website, actually. Bloody hell. 
I haven't one that says I've seen it. I haven't got one that says I've seen a thylacine, but maybe we should get one of them happening. Yeah, I reckon. I reckon uh, you get some good sales on that. <laughs> yeah, well, like uh, another guy reported a sighting to me near the east coast from about ten days ago as well. So that's yeah, two right. two sightings in Tassie in the last two and a half weeks, basically, which is really yeah. good. Really yeah, good. Right. What were you doing down there? Just holidaying, having a good time. Yeah, went down for a holiday. Went hiking at uh, what was it, Jerusalem? Oh yeah. Yeah. How'd you and go was, there? What was that? How'd you go there? Good. Yeah, it was good. It's bloody cold, but it was good. Yeah, it hasn't got cold yet. You, you've left just in the nick of time. <laughs> bloody hell! If that wasn't cold, I don't, don't want to go when it is. <laughs> I'll be back there in a couple of weeks, so I'll be walking straight into the wall of ice, basically. So. Yeah. Gets to minus Bloody 10 hell. out at my place, so I'll be uh, yeah. feeling it. But I've got plenty of firewood cut, so we'll be right. Yeah, you'll be fine. Awesome. Excellent. All right, mate. Well, look, if um, anything else pops into mind or, you know, your, your other mate wants to have a chat about it at all or whatever, by all means, let me know. All good. All good. We'll do it. No worries. I'll pop this up on YouTube in a couple of weeks when I get back. I'll just, yeah, um, that's all good. It'll be a brief one because it's only a five, ten minute chat, but that's all good. Too easy. Excellent. Good on you, mate. Thanks very much. Bye bye. No, no worries, Jacko. <laughs> That's all good. Now, um, I'm sorry for taking a few days to get back to you, mate. I've just been travelling, so I've finally uh, pulled over and had enough time to. No, that's and, all good. Um, and phone yeah, service. Me call. Yeah. What, what's what's been going on anyway? Um, oh, I've been enjoying myself. I've been out up that end of state, north uh, north. Northwest Coast, uh, doing a few things. I'm back in Launceston now. I just work on my Land Cruiser. So. Okay. Yep. Now yeah. you had a bit of a sighting on your way to work the other week. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I'll explain to you exactly what happened, and we'll go from there. Yep. No worries. Go for it. Um. So I was to left Campbelltown at about twenty past six, coming close to the end of uh, Lake Lake Highway. Yep. Just before there's sort of a couple of bends and then it opens up into some nice stringy grass sort of plains. Yep. This you is know, this is heading towards the coast, yeah? That's right, sorry, yeah. Yep. Yeah, head towards Swansea. And uh, dodging road kill all night, uh, as you do. Dodging animals all night, as you do. Yep. And uh seen this one animal. And I'm coming, coming towards it. And sometimes uh, foresters like to stay a bit longer. So I'm thinking, oh, it's a forester. Getting closer, it's probably 20 metres. So I'm thinking, oh, it's a forester. Hopefully it'll run away. I'm slowing down, slowing down. And then this animal uh, gets on all four. Well, it, it hops a bit. Comes into my left height, headlight. Gets back down on four and gallops away. And I thought to myself, um, well, I saw four to five um, striations on the back, and I thought, ah, oh, well, you know, th this is why people make false sightings, because an animal like that uh, exists that isn't a tiger. Yeah, sure. So <laughs> uh, that's when, as I emailed you there, um, I did some research and quails don't get that big. So this thing was probably 35 centimetres tall. Yep. Bigger than any quail that I can find uh, mentioned anywhere. Um, now, this disappointing thing is the fur was more of a grey, um, rusty, rusty grey. Sure. And the stripes were either a grey or a white. Yep. Uh, but I've never seen that before. Um, and yeah, it had those little lion cub ears and the eyes in the front of the face. Um, so yeah, they never seen anything like that before. The head wasn't like a quoll. Mm, I didn't get a, a, a very great look at the head. Right. Mostly, I've got a look over the last uh, three-fifths of it from the shoulder back. Okay, yep. Uh, but I've never seen a, um, a forester move like that. 
No, so they. I thought it was a Forester because it had a big, fat, strong rear legs. Oh, okay, and it was upright. Yeah, hop, hop, gallop. It galloped across the road. On like a hyena. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I, unfortunately, I can't give you any more information than that. How. Uh, Sorry, go on. Yeah. So, um, how close did you actually get to it? I'd say I was five to seven metres and did, upon it, running, finishing its run past my headlight. Yep, and so you didn't actually come to a stop, but you slowed right down? Yeah, I must have been doing 60. Yep, okay. And um, yeah. how long a duration do you think you were, you were looking at this thing from when you first spotted it to when you passed it? Let's see. Five to six seconds at most, but up close, like in a closer distance, maybe four seconds. Okay. Yeah, so I'd probably come in doing 80 or 90, sort of ease on the brakes, as you do when you're coming to load, you know which way they're going to go. Yeah. And it went across the front from left to right. And, um, yeah. <laughs> so that area up there, that's largely just all sags through that section, was it? Like just low grassy stuff? Uh, it's a lot of like tea tree sort of stuff. Yep. I don't know. I don't know what the what the fauna is, but exactly. But it's uh, like a tea tree. Oh, some of those trees there wouldn't be any bigger than four inch at the base. A lot of shrubby stuff, banksia sort of looking things. And yep. Um, but what what I find interesting is that very close to that area is a plains, and like there's animals everywhere. In between that area and the forest, this is where they seem to be more prevalent. As far as roadkills and stuff and goes. The full top, full on forest where that shrubby area is, there's so many wildlife. Yeah, that's the feeding grounds kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, I went back a week later at the end of my thing, and um, where I had a look there, I don't think that's the exact location. I think that's a probably 100 metres or 200 metres out, but there's a lot of bones everywhere. It's hard to tell what's going on. Underneath the tea trees? Yeah, uh, as you cross the road. Okay. Uh, there's, a, there's a spot where I can see a lot of animals cross. Well, I know animals, a lot of animals cross because I travel there a lot. Yeah. And uh, on the other side of that is a lot of bones. Now, I wouldn't expect... Um, well, yes, if there's roadkill, it probably gets dragged there. Yeah, devils would drag it in there, but devils generally eat everything. Right, they yeah, it could be just that. Then. They don't le usually leave too many bones lying around. Okay. Well, I saw it was probably the second femur, like the small femur. Yep. Like that was what I first spotted as I come up. Now, this isn't exactly where I spotted this thing. This is just up the road a bit, potentially, or it could be the same place. It's, yeah, within, it's within a quarter mile, if not it is the place. Yeah, okay, That's where you found the bones. Thing. Uh, now there was a skull of a um, skull of what I think is a paddy melon with the front of it bit off. Okay. So the nose down to probably this, the third or second tooth. Yep. So sort of diagonal cut from the nose back. I've got a small video uh, just walking around of this sort of stuff. And then there was a lot of vertebra, vertebra everywhere. Okay. Yeah, little vertebrae. I'm thinking of paddy melon or something's been just absolutely torn apart. Yeah, right. Or chopped, chopped. But the skull, unless it was hit by a car and then dragged there, the skull was chopped. Yeah, okay. Through, through the nose. Bitten right off. Yeah. I've found yeah. a couple of paddy melons. Um, I found one recently that was turned inside out. Inside out? Yeah, half. Uh, probably. dog that does that. Yeah, nah. <laughs> Devils don't do it either. Devils don't. Cats don't do it. They just. I'm not sure what cats do, but yeah. Yeah. Sure yeah. Surgical. Look, yeah, really strange. And then I do find the odd one with a bit of facial tissue, um, and neck or shoulder chewed out as well, which is also um, indicative of possible thylacine predation as well. Um, right. Often. Quite surgical. Yeah, very surgical. Um, they often will take um, the head and then they'll go in through the neck and take the lungs and leave the rest behind 
as well. Just pull it out, like suck it out. Literally. Once cut that esophagus, they can just pull it out. Right? Yeah, it comes straight out pretty much for them. But There's a lot of blood in there. That's exactly right, and they're blood feeders, so yeah. it's no surprise. But we find that sort of evidence all across Australia, not just Tassie. Yeah, um, I have watched your channel before, obviously a lot more in the last couple of weeks since I saw this thing. Yep. And um, oh, a couple of years ago, I sort of went through and watched a heap of stuff on the monocle. It was um, really interesting. Those were those stories were interesting. Yeah, with South the South Australia. Yeah, yeah, the Adyamatna people in the Flinders Ranges. Oh yeah, amazing stories and uh, those sightings uh, from those people. They know what they're looking at. Their eyes are they're probably better than ours for looking at that stuff. Yeah, they don't miss much. The uh, indigenous uh, folks, when it comes to the lay of the land and what's going on in it, they're pretty well switched onto it. No, uh, absolutely. You know, Polynesians uh, or Fijians and stuff when they're dieting, they don't need goggles. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and I assume that the Australian Aboriginals have an eye for, um, for looking for things that the rest of us can't see. Yeah. Um, the Tasmanian Aboriginals seem to have a snow a snow eyelid, like a, like a North Korean eye, the almond eye with the, uh, the, the cover, snow cover over it. Okay, so they can handle yeah. the weather. Yeah, I know two descendants of... Uh, Aboriginals and they've got the same eyes. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, one of them's a very strong, one of them's a very strong um, descendant, like very, very, like must be third or fourth, something like that. Sure. And that's uh, that's probably as high as you'll get. <laughs> um, yeah, I met a bloke. I met a bloke the other day um, on the ferry actually, because I'm on the mainland at the moment. Oh yeah. Yep. Uh, um, that's why I haven't been able to get older. But um, I met a fella the other day on the ferry and. Started chatting to him, and he's an older bloke, and I took a bit of a look at him, and I thought, oh, I reckon you might be a Tasmanian Aboriginal fella, and he, sure enough, he started telling me about it, and um, yeah. he had that real thick, curly hair as well that a lot of Tasmanian people have. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's plenty of Tasmanian Aboriginals out there still. They're, um, they're not as loud and um, obvious, I suppose, in many regards for whatever reasons, but they definitely uh, know their... Stuff if they've I been out in the land. A, a Torres Strait man, and he said to me, he was asking me questions about Tasmanian Aboriginal, and I was answering every question he asked me. He said, Look, oh, I went to the centre in Hobart and they couldn't tell me any of this. How do you know all this? I said, Well, it's all online, you know. If you want to know something, you just look it up, you know. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's all out there. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, there's a lot of history online that's um, quite interesting, actually. He was quite disappointed, though, that he came down here and he couldn't couldn't get the information from his from basically his brothers yeah yeah um, people that identify as well and they, they couldn't tell him anything and I, it was a bit upsetting for him and i said look but is the is the name uh what else can i tell you and i told him a few other things he goes look i couldn't get that information uh, anywhere i went um i said yeah well it's all online see so yeah fair enough yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes um, I suppose people are a little bit more closed shop and a bit secretive to um, people asking questions, and I get that to a degree as well, you know. That might be true. There's probably a bit of this dissent about um, Torres Strait Islander people asking as well, but they're just as tired to ask those questions. Absolutely. Yeah. So you're going to go up through that way again tomorrow then, by the sounds of it? Uh, tonight. Tonight. Hours, I'll be up there. I'll probably wait till dark before we go through. Yep. Um, there's traffic. Um, yeah, um, what else can I tell you? That's, that's it. I sort of drew a picture a couple of days later, just, just a basic scribble yep. of what I saw. And, um, what it come out, I can send it to you if you like, but it's not very appealing, but, um, what it come out as this picture that I took from my mind on the paper, it come out as halfway between one of those giant, um, wombats. And halfway between the silo scene. Okay. Um, well, I thought I might bounce an idea off you or two. Yeah. So, if, well, I tend, to, I tend to agree with you in the fact that uh, the East Coast is the perfect uh, location. The West Coast, I think, personally, it's a waste of time. It's, it's cold. People don't want to live there. And animals are very scarce. Yeah. Uh, the plains don't exist, too. The plains that the Aboriginals created themselves as a... Um, as a, well, this time of year... They're all full of trees travel. again now. 
but exactly, yeah. Yeah, they'd be travelling from, from the lakes to the um, to the east coast right now, and that's where a lot of animals are doing too. So I think the connection between Fylce and the local Aboriginals is very strong. And I believe in, the, in, in what you say is the east coast is their, is their stopping ground. They have camouflage for that area, so... Yeah, well, when you get those um, big areas of the sags in amongst a lot of those swampy areas between the, the woodland outcrops, especially yeah. out my way, that's that's prime camouflage for them going through that those sags. It's all lamandras, like tussocky grasses and stuff. Um, oh, for sure. They melt into that country. Oh, for sure. Um, first time I realised that was when um, uh, it was a, a lady that had a farm and you visited, I think, twice. And she said that that um, if she hadn't seen it move before it stopped, I think it was the same lady that had the siding at the picnic area with the, the daughter and a grandmother. Yeah, correct. That was Regina McKenzie. Right, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. That's when I realised. Well, you know, that, that's correct. Uh, yeah, that was an interesting story. Masters um, so of the story that captivated me the most was the uh, ex policeman with the Land Cruiser coming up from. Um, uh, from your way through, oh, from... From Ringaruma. Yeah, heading out to Wilbra. Um, oh, yes, and he had another, he had another side at, um, uh, the funeral of Mangana too, which was, uh, yeah, his, his stories were, uh, I thought, pretty credible, to be honest. Yeah, look... Although a long time ago. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of very credible people that have got no reason to make things up. Sure, um, yeah. And there's many instances of multiple people seeing these things, you know, like... You know, up to a busload of people seeing these things at the same time. You know, that happened in WA. Sid Slee mentions that in his book. Where a busload of um, elderly people out on a day trip pulled up, and this thing was right there in the parking bay, and they all saw it basically. I mean, if it was a, um, uh, is a Doberman that gets the black and the and the blonde stripe on them? Um, not... If it was something like that, that these people know dogs. They they would they would have said that. You know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and the way you know, they walk. if you can't take the word of a copper or a judge or a lawyer or, you know, an agricultural sales agent or something, you know, these people are on the land, they're out there in the country, they see things a lot of the time, you know. Yeah. Now, now look, I can't tell you what I saw. Yeah. Other than what I saw, that, that's pretty much exactly what I tell you is what I saw. Uh, but I can't tell you what it was. I, I... You can tell me what it wasn't, though. <laughs> Well, it might not have been a file scene, but it wasn't something I've seen before. Sure. Um, and what's to say that, um, well, it, it, the monocody that, that you've shown on your channel through Regina and a few other sources, um, it doesn't look anything like the ones that we have in our museums. No, and, and there's um, a lot of colour variation too, Jacko, as well, you know? Yeah, yeah, she's... Um, I wonder if um, if I have seen something that we're looking for, um, if it's changed, if it's morphed, or if it, or if it's um, it's a winter thing, or or perhaps it's changed because it was in the highlands and it's come down, or or is it because it's pregnant? Um, now that's another thing I need to mention is that um, the front of it looked right for what we're looking for. Yep. What I did see of it, not much, because it was sort of up. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, I'm scared thinking about it really, but it was sort of up with its, with its mouth and it come down and now sort of, sort of, because it's passed in your left headlight as it's come down, the right one hasn't picked it up yet. Okay. So I didn't get an awesome look at it. But what I can tell you is the silhouette, uh, how do you say, the silhouettes of sharks in the final scene in the museums, but they are, they've shrunk it. With the taxi driver, they've obviously shrunk it, but do you know how the, they sort of thin out as they come towards the bump. Yeah. Under the legs. Yep. Now, this one wasn't thinning out. So it might have had a pouch full of young, you think? It could have been something in there. Yep, okay. Unless it was a forester with stripes, which I've never seen before, because they sort of fat down the bottom. Yep. But which was mine. Foresters so don't gallop. Right. That's the problem that I have with that. Yeah, I've never seen this animal before. So I'm thinking, oh, yeah. So it morphed as I went through. Like, it went, it went through and I thought, oh, forester. And then I thought, oh, something I've never seen before. And then I thought, oh, quail. But then I'm like, it was too big to be a quail. So that, that's exactly what went through my mind in those five, six, seven, eight seconds that I was viewing this thing was, ah, oh, another forester. Yep. 
Oh, what's doing on four legs? Maybe it's a quoll. It's too big. Well, it's got stripes on its back. Um, and then it's all over. <laughs> and then it's gone. It, it, once it had got the first leap off from being upright to down, so upright to down was a bit slow, but once it went through that left headlight, it shot through the right headlight like bounce. It took a probably over a metre bounce, over a metre gallon. Yeah, and it was off the road. Gone, and it was up, up the bank or wherever. I, I didn't see anything after it took that. After it took the second gallop, where I might have saw the tail and the stripes one more time. Yep, it was gone. <laughs> and I didn't think anything of it by going back because I just thought, oh, maybe it's a quail. I better go look at quails. What a tiger quails look like. Yeah. Spots, no stripes. Yeah, and, no uh, stripes. I think the biggest one was, what, 13 kilos or something. It's tiny. It's the same size as the cat, so... Yeah. Did you see um, that thermal imagery I got last year? I think so. It's in a distance. It's not it's at your mate's place, is it, his paddock? No, no. This this one was um, sort of a, a coloured thermal. It wasn't a black and white thermal. Oh, yeah, the red one? Yeah, the red one, yeah. yeah. That... Yeah. That animal, I, I, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, is that a quoll? And then it started walking towards me. And I, I sort of realised that it wasn't a quoll because it was just too big. The head. Yeah, and, and it's got that classic look about it when it silhouettes as it's going past. It's sort of like a stuffy head. but A little bit, yeah, a bit stockier, like a yeah. bulkier looking head. Um, what I have noticed is everyone thinks they're thin, but from what the samples we have left in, Preservation that the heads are, they do vary so a bit actually. Well, the, the females have got a slightly thinner head than the males, okay. and I have noticed the tendency for a lot of the pelts of the females to be grey and sometimes oh, with a tinge Christ. of red. So that would fit in with what you're sort oh, of suggesting yeah. with what you've seen as well, well to a degree. Now, now, I think the stripes are white or grey, but that's not to say that in a headlight they might come out as a bristle different colour. Yeah. Um, one negative I can tell you is that there was any, wasn't any stripes on the tail. Unless there was, and I couldn't see them. Well, the tails aren't generally striped anyway. It's more of a shadowing of the vertebrae in the tail, apparently. Oh, for real? Yeah. Wow. So I, I wouldn't expect to see stripes on the tail. Maybe at the very rump, at the base of the tail, where they stop. Um, oh. But, yeah, I wouldn't wow. expect to see the, the tail striped with distinctive sort of rings through it. That was another thing. The tail was pretty strong. Yep. On it was sort of thick triangle shape at the base. Long, tri long triangle, for, yeah, long triangle shape. A lot of lot of muscle in that tail. Yeah, well, they they use it for a fair amount of their energy when it comes to bounding off. I've right. got quite a few sightings of them being on the side of the road and and one bound straight up a ten foot embankment, just one leap straight up the top. Yeah, I've seen cats do it too, so... Yeah, that, that rear possible. end's got plenty um, of power. They don't do it very often. Cats don't. All animals for that, for that instance, but the fact that a cat will do it when it's really, really dire... Yep. Which proves that, that another animal could do it too, so... Absolutely. Yeah. And our marsupials are known... Two and a half metres, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, they, they're, but they're all pretty strong in the rear end when it comes to bounding. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, sure. Now, um, yeah, now that, that's all I can tell you, unfortunately. Um, a little bit inconclusive, but... No, that's all right, mate. It's all part of the puzzle. Um, if you want to send that sketch through to me, you can. Yeah. Um, and your video well, and any other bits so, yeah. bits and pieces. If you stop and photograph or whatever, but feel free and I can throw that in a clip. You're okay with me releasing this on YouTube for people to have a listen to? Uh, yeah, no worries. All right, it, mate. It cool. Helps. I'm sure that somebody else in that area has seen something. There's people who live there too. So yeah, well, up towards Lake Leak, a bit south of there, there was a fella I met a couple of years ago in Lonnie, an old fella, and he used to manage the property up there for the people that owned it. Uh, right, is this the shooter? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and yeah. he he's seen him a few times up there back in the yeah, 80s. It's, it's perfect. Um, look, everything ties in. It's perfect area for them. For them. For hunting, for, for and this time of year it was the same time of year that the my little carney was coming through and doing there, and I, I strongly believe that this animal migrated with with the local population. 
It did. Because that local it population did. doesn't exist anymore. It's doing um, its own thing. It's just doing random. If it's still out there, it's it's random. It's it's just kicking on best it can. It's not used. It's you know it takes generations for animals. Like people can talk and communicate, but animals take generations to, to cycle a new pattern. So yeah, yeah, and look, the the black fellas would would have their migration. The thylacines would follow them, and then the devils would follow the thylacines. Right. So that's. And they're in random spots where where you would like. I honestly don't believe they belong in the rainforest. Well, I wouldn't say they don't belong there, but I would say that there's far less biodiversity as far as mammals go. So it's it's not going to be a prime hunting area for them because there's just not as much food to to catch. But yeah, um, it's like they're they're a displaced. Yeah, to a degree. Where they want to be, yeah. But like everybody says, oh, you should go to the southwest. That's where they'll be. Go in there, you'll find them for sure. And you know what? Anyone who wants to go into the southwest on their own with a backpack and go looking for thylacines, I take my hat off to them. You know, I want to find a thylacine, but I don't want to freeze to death and get eaten by devils either. You know. No, absolutely. Uh, I, yeah, I think I think these guys it makes sense, especially this time of year. I think if there's going to be signs, they're going to ramp up about now. I believe that's that's just my personal. Yeah, well, they'd be coming yeah. inland. I don't think they'll be out the coast too much longer. They'll be inland as it gets yeah, colder. Yeah, listen to the black fellas, you know. They know. They knew everything. I mean, they, they lived here for so long, they actually um, end up using less or less tools because they, life got easy on got on easy mode, you know. Um, yeah, well, they established they their hunting fish. grounds and stuff, so... Yeah, they even stopped eating the fin fish because, oh, it's too hard. I can just go and grab a lobster off the beach, you know, so... <laughs> <laughs> they stopped using Tough spears, gig. They stopped using needles. Life got easy until us fellas come along and, yeah. <laughs> and the rest is history, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, All right, yeah. mate. No worries. Well, look, if like I said, you've got my email there or you can get it off the end of one of our videos. It's don't believe my eyes at hotmail.com. Um, so anything you want to send through, flick it through. And when I get back home, I'll edit this off and I can chuck in a bit of visual there for people as well then. Of what yeah, you're talking the about. not that good, but I'll send it to you anyway. Yeah, and no, I'll, that's all good. It's all relative. Where, like I said, the video, I went through the other night and I didn't want to spend too much time there, understandably. Sure. Um, <clears throat> uh, with all the bones and that I've seen. Um, it's quite a lot of poaching going on there too. You don't want to step in the wrong. Oh, yeah, you don't want to upset uh, too many locals on the way through there. Yeah, well, where I, yeah, where I was was already like, someone had knocked a fence down. So anyway, that's I don't believe that was exactly the area where I saw this thing. So I'm going to go back through tonight the same direction I was going. Yep. See and if I'll you can pin right it and see if I can pick points. I think where I sent you a pin on email, that's probably most likely. I'll have a look again there tonight. No worries. See I can dig up, see um, prints or anything, a feces or... Just, I don't know what this thing was doing. It was hanging on the side of the road before. It may have been eating a roadkill. They do eat been. They do eat fresh roadkill. They won't eat something that's old and rotten, but a fresh one they'll take. Right, there's a lot on that road, so... Yeah, it's like takeaway food for them. Yeah, it's perfect. Um, although people live out there, it's very quiet. Yep. Um, and it's, the houses are not in you know, open plains, they're in forests, so they're not making noise or anything to disturb animals. There's so many animals out there, they're not even phased by people living there, so. Yep. Yeah, I mean, there's probably a house every four or five kilometres, it's not that dense. Yeah, sure. It's um, yeah. pretty quiet so, out there. A lot of animal corridors that aren't affected, so. Awesome. Yeah. All right, mate. No, appreciate you calling me, Neil. Um, yeah, I hope your mainland trip goes all right. Yeah, no worries. Cheers for that. I'll be in touch or I'll hear back from you anyway. Yeah. No, I'll send some stuff off to you uh, today. Good on you, mate. All right. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks, Neil. Ta-da. Ta